Hello everyone, this is Christine Lucan, your financial lifeguard, and I'm so excited for you to be joining us today. Uh, we have a very special guest for our session, which is the Debt Overload Masterclass, and we're talking about what do we do when our debt levels get scary, when it feels like we're never going to be able to dig ourselves out of this hole. So we have the distinct pleasure of having Howard Dvorkin, who is the chairman of Debt.com. He is a personal finance expert, a CPA, and he is on the Forbes Personal Finance Council. So Howard, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me, Christy. Hey, you are welcome. So we have a big list of questions <laughs> to ask you today. Um, and I think the first one that I wanna talk about is how do you know when you need debt relief or is it just a matter of, of buckling down and getting things paid off? So I think that's a question that a lot of people have when they're thinking about reaching out and getting help for their debt. I mean, listen, uh, the amount of debt is different for everybody. It, it, it could be 5,000 in debt, or it could be 10,000, or it could be 50,000. The amount of debt one has, it's a personal thing. I mean, obviously, there's some telltale signs that people have to worry about. If, if debt is a constant worry, uh, mm -hmm. just keeping you up at night, maybe there's a problem. If there's you're struggling just to make ends meet, maybe there's a problem there too. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact of the matter is lots of us have too much, you know, too much month <laughs> to pay for and right. not enough money to pay for that. You know, towards the end of the month, if you're getting choked, you know, you should obviously take a step back. I mean, the yeah. fact of the matter is debt is a personal thing and, and it's everybody's comfort level. And it's not, there's different types of debt. There's right. credit card debt, there's car debt, there's house debt, there's student loans. There's all sorts of debt that people must be cognizant of. And all of that requires payments, but not only that, uh, the challenge is if you're putting essential expenses mm -hmm. on your credit cards, that's also a problem. Meaning right. you're going to the grocery store, you put it on your credit cards, you put it, you go to the gas station, you put it on your credit cards. It is a massive challenge for people to comprehend because not everybody accumulates debt in the same manner and certainly digging out of debt is a very complicated uh, endeavor if you don't have the training, if you're not listening to our master class right now. Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, um, you know, I like that you said it's a very individualized thing. Um, you know, most of the people who are watching are probably at least somewhat familiar with my story of crashing and burning financially despite having an accounting degree. And, you know, it wasn't because I didn't know better. It was because I was an, in an unhealthy relationship with uh, someone who was terrible with money. And, you know, I paid the price for some of those mistakes and some of those things that I went along with. And, you know, I know what it feels like to be called by collectors. And I know what it feels like to be worried that your your car is going to be repossessed. And I think there's also a lot of shame and embarrassment um, when people get into that situation. And so I just want to extend, you know, some hope to people to say, it's. I know it feels like the end of the world, but it's not, right? It's just money. Um, and even though it, it may feel like a really bad thing, you know, there is help and, you know, there is a way through it. Well, you, you bring up some interesting points and lots of different points. <laughs> I mean, first of all, you're trained, a trained accountant. Um, mm -hmm. so if it happens to you, it can happen to anybody. The fact right. of the matter is we are not 
trained to deal with debt. The average person um, can't, doesn't know. We know how to get into it because it's easy. <laughs> right. But, but the yes. fact of the matter is to get out of it, it's so overwhelming at times. And you think the whole world is crushing, you know, falling down around you. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard to ask for help. I mean, it the fact is. of the matter is, you know, our companies answer thousands of calls a day from people who are in debt. And we try to help everyone get out of debt. And I will tell you that you shouldn't be embarrassed at all. Um, yeah. You know, the embarrassed, the people that should be embarrassed are the people that don't ask for help because right. they're too afraid. And, you know, frankly, at Debt.com, the conversations are completely uh, anonymous. In, in mm -hmm. And we have as a CPA, uh, you know, and I push this through our company, uh, we do not disclose anybody's financial information to anybody. Right. Uh, and, and we won't do it. But the fact of the matter is, people have to feel comfortable coming to you and opening up. And lots of people get into debt for different reasons, Christine. Right. Um, no, absolutely. You know, and it could um, be an unhealthy marriage. It could be just poor financial, financial management. It mm -hmm. could be the loss of overtime. It could be the loss of a job. It could ha be having a baby. Um, right. It could even be picking up an expense that you didn't have, meaning you you didn't have a car payment and all of a sudden you go out and buy a car and now you have a $500 a month car payment. So yeah, challenging, yeah. without question. It's yeah. Well, and I think some of the things that I like kind of look for is warning signs to say, okay, maybe you need something beyond coaching, right? Maybe you need extra help beyond what me as a coach, you know, can help you work through paying off this debt. Um, and I would say some of those things are, you know, a very high debt to income ratio. So when I'm looking at their non-mortgage debt, you know, we might, someone might feel like $50,000 is a huge amount of debt, but if you're a doctor making $350,000 a year, that might not feel like a big amount of debt. But, you know, if you're a nurse making Eighty-five or ninety thousand dollars a year, fifty thousand dollars is going to feel like it's crushing you, right? But so, the fact, the fact of the matter is, people don't need to live on debt. They no, don't. they don't. They they yeah. they, they, they are better <laughs> off trying to pay off their debt, use cash when they can, because yeah. the only person when you're in debt, the only person that you're making wealthy, is the bank. Right. Frankly. <laughs> and you know, my suggestion is always try to be your own bank. Try right. to be your own bank and pay yourself the interest right. rather than making Chase or Chase Bank or Citibank or whatever banks are out there. Yeah. Uh, rich. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I'll tell my clients, like, I don't, I'm not opposed to you using a credit card as a payment method. But it can turn into a debt machine if you're not paying it off in full every month. And you have to be smart enough to know if you can trust yourself. <laughs> I think that's well, absolutely that's I mean, the, the most fact of the thing. matter is, you know, I'm a big proponent of of using that stuff, that green stuff. You know, yeah. people, you remember the you remember that? It's called money. Debt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but now it's so easy to yeah. not to use it. Right. And and to use your credit cards or you you know, all these different payment methods. I mean, the fact of the matter is cash is, it, there's a pain factor in, in letting that stuff slip through your fingers. So yeah. I, I always believe that people should turn around and, and allow themselves the opportunity to pay off the debt. I mean, for some reason, some people, because their parents were in debt and maybe their grandparents were in debt, they think debt's acceptable and it's really not. Nobody yeah. should be in debt. Nobody has to be in debt. And I know right. that's a big thing for people to do, but what happens, let's talk about what happens if you are in debt. Yes. How to get out of debt, because that's extremely yes. important. It is. Um, yeah, and so I, I actually do have some questions um, that, I, that I got from people ahead of time. So 
what options are available if you've got a lot of credit card debt? And maybe you are in a situation where, you know, you've become disabled or you've been laid off or, you know, you, you've lost your overtime, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic right now and a lot of people's income, you know, may not be what it was a year ago. Yep. Listen, there are five ways I would say to get out of debt. One, okay. one way is to run away from everything and <laughs> shove your head in the sand like an ostrich. That's probably not a good uh, tactic. The right. second way is to go through and just pay those minimum payments off. But the fact of the matter, those minimum payments are designed to keep you in debt mm -hmm. where 75% of your payment is going towards interest and only 25%, if you're lucky, yeah. is going towards reducing your balances. Right. And that's probably not the greatest way. If you're going to do the minimum payment method, maybe paying three times your the minimum payment, that will get you out of debt. But a lot of people don't have that kind of money. Um, there's always uh, a debt management plan, which okay. is what one of the programs that consolidated or that consolidated credit offers. But debt manage uh, debt.com. Uh, initiates the conversation. But at the end of the day, uh, the- So what does that look like if someone debt, needs basically that? Basically, a debt management plan is taking all your debt into one payment, having a certified counselor guide you through, take your income, your expenses, and look at your debt. And then that certified counselor will go through and negotiate on your behalf with your creditors. And typically the creditors will sometimes waive interest completely mm. or reduce your interest substantially. Most creditors, credit card companies will do something, but also you're reducing your payments by 30 to 50%. And thus, if you didn't do anything, you could stay in debt for many, many years. A $10,000 right. debt could take you 15 years to pay off at 20% interest or 25% interest. Right. With a debt management plan, you can actually pay off your debt in a three to four year period, which is typical. Um, yeah. Maybe a little longer if they reduce your payments, but the quicker you pay it off, the quicker you're out of debt. Right. There's also a debt settlement plan which a debt settlement is a little more aggressive um, and it's popular, but the problem you have is that there's a lot of damage. Whereas debt management, you're paying 100% of your money back to your, the people you owe. So there is not a lot of damage, if not any damage to your credit rating. Uh, oh, debt settlement is only paying 40 cents on the dollar back to your creditor in very small amounts. And that is a, a very large challenge to maintain a positive credit rating because during the time you may end up in, with legal issues and things mm. like that. So it's a much more aggressive, but the savings are uh, advantageous. So essentially, if somebody cares about their credit and wants a good credit rating, a debt management plan is probably the, the tactic that I would suggest. If their credit is already damaged and they don't care about the credit, they're just in, <laughs> and people don't. I've been there. And, Howard, I've been there. I understand. People, people will just <laughs> do the settlement program, get out of debt for you know, pennies on the dollar, which is great. Um, right. Both plans are good. Both plans will get you out of debt, but you got to make the payments. And the fifth way to get out of debt is bankruptcy, where you just declare uh, you can't, you're insolvent and you have to mm -hmm. go through the courts. And there's some courses you have to take that's mandatory by the federal bankruptcy laws, uh, which at the time and back in the early 2000, I actually designed uh, some of those some of those laws oh, cool. and advise on those laws. But at the end of the day, um, bankruptcy is not 
the best option for a lot of people because it does do significant damage to people. And frankly, it's a little bit embarrassing. No, I totally agree. Um, you know, and unfortunately, sometimes I see people almost forced into that situation. Um, for example, my mother-in-law, that happened to her when she got divorced. Um, you know, her ex-husband was supposed to, you know, he took the house, he was supposed to be paying on the house. And, you know, probably all of a sudden, next thing she knows, like the house is in foreclosure, he's filing bankruptcy. And so then they're, they're calling her and she's like, you know, it said in the bankruptcy, like, like, you know, in the divorce that I wasn't supposed to have to pay for this, you know, and the truth of the matter is her name was still on that house and they were coming after her and, you know, she was very embarrassed about it. But I told her, I said, look, this is the only option, you know, I mean, I've, I've probably only recommended, I mean, I've been doing this coaching for 12 years. I think I've probably recommended maybe three or four people in that entire time file bankruptcy. But, you know, she was semi-retired. She was drawing social security. She, she did not have the money to pay that even if she wanted to. So. Unfortunately, I see that quite often. I personally, I've counseled over 40,000 people. Wow. 20, almost 28 years I've been doing this. So yeah. we, you know, debt.com and, and its predecessor, I mean, frankly, we have counseled tens of millions of people um, right. and, and millions upon millions hit our websites for information. So right. who knows, it's countless. But uh, unfortunately, I've heard that story before many mm. times and I've yes. seen that story play out. <laughs> And, and what happens is people think that because the one spouse is required by the court to pay the credit cards or the car payments or, or, the, or the mortgage, uh, unfortunately, uh, the creditors don't care who pays it as long as somebody pays it. And they you know. will go after whoever they can. They don't uh, comply with the court degree. And that is a cer certainly a challenge. But I mean, at the end of the day, bankruptcy is not the first option. It's the right. last option. And the challenge is that, and I don't mean to anger any bankruptcy attorneys out there, but I will tell you. I don't that, think we have any on the call, so we're I good. Whether we do or not, <laughs> because they, they have to agree with what I'm going to say. I mean, they have one product. So if you go to a bankruptcy attorney, the only thing they can possibly sell you is bankruptcy. You know, when you go to a company, a, a service such as debt.com, we have lots of options that right. can get you out of debt. And it depends on the level. A lot of people that come to our site at debt.com don't even engage with us. They just use us for the information that's on our website or talk to people. I mean, you can get so much information uh, for free. There's no yeah. cost, but right. you have to spend the time to educate yourself and people don't want to educate themselves. They would rather, you know, uh, take an aspirin and, and make it go away. And right. the fact of the matter is, you're going to have to take a lot. If you're heavy in debt, you're going to have to take a lot of aspirin because it doesn't <laughs> go away so easy. Right. Yes. So I, I've got a serious question. What happens if I owe the IRS money? Okay. Well, now let me put my CPA hat on. Okay. If I did, I did do, <laughs> and in prior life, I did a lot of tax work. The IRS has a tough reputation that they're unreasonable, they're mean, they're evil. The fact of the matter is they are decent people. They just want to get paid what they're owed. So you shouldn't run away from them because eventually they win. They'll On find you. Debts, there is no statute <laughs> of limitations. Most of the time you can't even file bankruptcy on some of these debts. Uh, so you have to pay the government. You got to pay them. Um, the fact of the matter is, if they send you a letter, answer it. Now, I will tell you, and from personal experience, I've had friends that have gotten calls 
from the IRS. And they said, well, you're, we're, we have an arrest warrant for you and we're going to send you, you know, we're gonna arrest you because you owe us money. And all of a sudden those people uh, send them money. But guess what? IRS does not call people. They send you letters <laughs> and they don't send you emails. They send you letters and you, it's up to you to reach out to them. So don't be scammed. This is one of the biggest scams mm -hmm. that's going on because of the reputation of the IRS. At the end of the day, they are willing to work with you and try to resolve the issue. A lot of the times they'll knock off penalties and interest payments just to get the principal paid. There's things called comp uh, offer and compromise. And basically that's going in and saying, listen, I don't have this money, I want to pay you. And they will look at your finances and say, you're right, you can't pay me. <laughs> why don't you pay me $50 a month for the rest of your life to pay this debt off and I won't charge you interest or pay, and I'll waive the penalties. I mean, right. the fact of the matter is, you know, they are, they are not as horrible as <laughs> most think. However, yeah. if you're a really bad person, <laughs> If you're a really bad person, yes, they are going to be bad. They're going to be mean. And it's really, I learned this as, a, as an accountant. Uh, it's the, the color of their badge. If it's a silver shield, you're fine. Because those are the nice ones. Oh. If it's a gold shield, you're in trouble. You're in trouble <laughs> because those guys are carrying guns and you're in trouble. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I mean, the fact of the matter is if you are like any other uh, taxpayer, you know, they're just going to try to work with you to set up a plan. Yes, you may pay some interest. Yes, you may pay some penalties, but you will get out of debt as long as you're honest and try to make an effort. On yeah. the other hand, if but I think that's a good point is that you can't be dodging them. You have to be open. You have to initiate that communication. Um, you know, I've got clients I'm working with right now who owe the IRS back taxes. And a lot of times it's because they're self-employed um, and they didn't set aside that um, portion of their income to pay their quarterly taxes. But, um, you know, like you said, you know, if you reach out to them or have, you know, your CPA reach out to them on your behalf, you know, most of the time they are more than willing to set up those payment plans for you because they want you to be current. They want to work with you. Right. No, I would say that. But also as a, as a practicing CPA for a bunch of years, I will tell you that sometimes your accountants make mistakes. So if you own a significant amount of money, maybe it's a good idea to get a second opinion to make sure that you filed the right forms, took every option, uh, deduction, deduction that you're yeah. entitled to, make sure that, you know, you, 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 you're, you're correct or they're correct in owing you money. So sometimes a second opinion, if you have foot surgery, you might go to one doctor, he says something, you might go to another doctor and he says something totally different. So that's not a bad thing. But I will tell you, you got to deal with them. And those penalties and interest add up, compound, and you could be saddled with hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt and in a very short period of time. Right. Um, but you have to address it and you have to be you know, forthright in, in, yeah. in your desire to, right. uh, uh, to liquidate the liability. Yes. Yeah. And so this kind of like leads into this next question. Um, you know, what if I'm receiving collector calls or I already have a garnishment? What are my options? Well, collector calls, first of all, there's laws about collector calls. And the one right. thing I want to tell your listenership or your viewership is that you can stop those collector calls very simply by asking the person on the phone, do not call me and please send any correspondence to me by mail only. Now, you probably want to follow up with that conversation with a letter sent certified. That will stop the collector calls. I will tell you, I, you know, 
I've had clients that have toyed with the collectors and pretend they answer the voice, they phone in different voices and, you know, kind of make it into a game, which only frustrates the collectors even more. But the fact of the matter is sometimes a collector can be helpful. Meaning if you owe $5,000 on a debt, Maybe you can pay them $800 and they go away and the debt's paid in full. Also right. watch the statute of limitations. Uh, sometimes they may be calling you from a debt you ran away from years and years ago and you may not even owe that debt, but people end up triggering the statute of limitations and extending that, so be careful. If you walked away from a debt, a lot of states, the rule of thumb is seven years, um, mm -hmm. If you haven't paid it, if it's a 10 year old debt, you could probably do a nice job uh, making that vanish. Okay. Yeah. Well, so uh, here's a little funny tidbit for you. So I actually worked for Citibank as a collector when I was in college. And during that time, so I, nice. you I, was, be a <laughs> I was behind on all my bills except for Citibank. Well, and here's the thing. I, I was really good when I, when I was working in the one month past due department and then they kept promoting me. And then when I got to the three month past due department, my performance started suffering <laughs> because I just couldn't be mean. I, <laughs> and I was just- sitting in there. In the, <laughs> you know what though? That, and I would hear those stories of people who like had cancer or their husband died. And I would just be like, you know what? Don't worry about it. <laughs> the most successful collectors actually have empathy. And yeah. truthfully, I love hiring credit counselors that have challenges simply because they're there. They understand what people, what problems people have. Right. And so it's that empathy is powerful. And not all collectors are mean. I mean, they right. really aren't. And now with the with the CFPB, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, you can't be mean or you get sued um, right. as a collection company. So sometimes being a nice collector works well. <laughs> it sometimes does. it doesn't, <laughs> but sometimes it does. And you know, you can empathize with these people and sympathize to a certain extent. Um, yeah. But I will tell you now your question of garnishment. Yes. I mean, there are, and let's talk about garnishment. Garnishment is when they garnish your, when a, somebody you owe money to garnishes either your tax refunds, your bank accounts, or your paycheck. paychecks. Now they yeah. usually have to go through a legal uh, mm -hmm. uh, claim and go through the court system to get that unless it's a federal loan, where federal loans, they have all sorts of superpowers <laughs> and they can garnish you pretty darn easy with yes. just because you owe, owe the federal government money. Um, but let's talk about that. The fact of the matter is if you're in a garnishment, they've already chased you. They've spent money to get you to get that garnishment. They've gone to court and frankly, there's not a lot that you can do other than pay it off or pay it, negotiate a payment that's outside of your normal payment that they're garnishing. Meaning if they're taking 25% of your salary, mm -hmm. maybe you say, listen, I have $2,000 over here. Will you take that and stop the garnishment? Sometimes that'll work. Sometimes it won't work. My okay. suggestion always is to remove yourself. The client should remove themselves because they're emotionally attached and get somebody like debt.com to go and, and do your bidding for you. Because at the end of the day, you know, our agents at debt.com are not, uh, are not emotionally attached. This is their right. job. So right. they're, and they know all the tricks. So I always recommend that instead of negotiating with your creditors on your own, mm. maybe maybe you should at least talk to a certified credit counselor before trying to do it yourself because you may end up putting yourself in bad shape. Also, 
if you do choose to do it in yourself, write down notes on the conversations, mm -hmm. date those notes, the time, but also uh, try to get everything in writing back yes. from the, the creditor because you know, all of a sudden you may give them that $2,000 and the next week they're calling you for the rest of the money. Yeah. Or they don't release that balance. So you have to mm -hmm. get everything in writing. Yes, absolutely. Yes. That's the one thing I, I do tell people is, you know, before you settle on any debt, you know, if you say, Hey, I know you, I owe you 600. Will you take 300? And they say, sure. You say, well, I need to get that in writing from you first. <laughs> And as soon as I get that email, I'll be happy to call you back and give you give you the appropriate information so you can have that payment. Yep. Yes. You have to do that. I mean, garnishments, you know, they've done everything. They're getting their money typically. And mm -hmm. they spend a lot of money. I mean, they probably spent right. a couple thousand dollars in court fees uh, mm -hmm. to, to chase you down and get you to that level. Now, right. student loans are a little different because the student loans, again, they're not dischargeable in bankruptcy. They have right. no statute of limitations. They're gonna get it. They're gonna pull right. your tax refunds. They're gonna pull, they can garnish your wages. Um, certain states have home uh, uh, head of household rules where if you mm -hmm. have a child, uh, you can avoid getting garnished, um, things like that. Yeah, you always wondered what those kids are for. That's what they're for. <laughs> <laughs> they're good to get you out of debt <laughs> or get you out of garden. I was going to say, so usually or they get put, you into or, debt first. <laughs> or put you in debt. <laughs> yes. So let me ask you this. If, if someone has a garnishment and they decide to file bankruptcy, what does that do to the garnishment? Does that stop it? If someone enters? It, inter it okay. stops it. Once they go through so. and get discharged, it'll stop it. Okay. Yeah. That's but, what I thought. Uh, listen, bankruptcy, again, is not the it's not the first choice it's the absolutely last choice. right because the long-term ramifications of filing bankruptcy not good now yeah i will tell you that credit counseling is a much simpler way to get out of debt there's mm -hmm. very little damage to your credit report um because you're paying your debts back and right. the fact of the matter is at least in our credit counseling programs um we are able to, people can still buy houses, still buy cars after a few months of being in the program. Oh, that's awesome. No, it is. But debt settlement, on the other hand, you're going to have a tough time. It's going to bang up your credit pretty good. Right. Yeah. So you mentioned student loan debt. Um, now, I know when you were referring to, you know, not get being able to get out of that, you were talking about the federally backed student loans, right? Because you've got private private lenders for student loans and you've got, um, you know, the federal government. Should people be looking at refinancing their student loan debt? They always should look at it and see what the possibilities are. There's some amazing programs uh, under the laws that changed probably five, six years ago. Um, there's even a chance that you can rid yourself of the debt depending on what position you work at. Meaning, hmm. if you work for a nonprofit or a government, as long as you file a certificate saying, I work for this school, I work for this hospital, but it has to be nonprofit or government, can't be for profit, the US government, and these are only for US backed loans will uh, waive whatever balance you have after 10 years. Uh, okay. Of That's payment. pretty significant. Well, it's pretty significant considering you could walk in there with $200,000 worth of student loans and make 10 years of payments and maybe you pay 60,000 over that 10 years. And then after 10 years, they just waive the, the, the balance. So wow. it's very significant. <laughs> Now, private loans are a little different. That means you're going to your bank, you're going to a loan a lender. They don't have the same benefits or programs as a, as a government, as a federally backed student loan. Um, right. 
but I will tell you there are some good deals there that you can refinance these these loans and and get rid of your debt as fast as you can. The best right. case is take a student loan that's offered through the federal government. There's plenty of programs to to go through, but again, you have to educate yourself because these programs have the longest names in the history of federal <laughs> programs and you can't remember and they sound the same and but the fact of the matter is if you do your homework you can really get out of debt quite a bit quicker um but again private loans is just like a regular loan you know right. it's just chargeable in bankruptcy but private loans in or federal loans is not dischargeable in bankruptcy and you can't get rid of it. It will follow you. And again, they have the ability to call you up. And if you're highly delinquent, they could just file a form and start garnishing your bank account yeah. just, just immediately. They don't even have to go to court. Yep. No, I've seen it happen. And I used to work in HR. So every once in a while, I would get those garnishment notices. What job haven't you had? <laughs> <laughs> well, so I actually worked for my family's business and I was the vice president of HR and accounting. So I oversaw those two departments. So right. <laughs> I have my pulse on, on a lot of different things. Um, so let's see, what other questions hadn't we answered yet? Um, well, I would like to open it up to, you know, the people who are here with us live. What sort of questions do you have? Okay. Ooh, good. Um, oh, I once stupidly left a job without paying off a 401k loan. So I owed a few thousand dollars to the IRS. They were very nice and it was easy to set up payment plans. Awesome. That's good. Um, let's see. Someone's asking, not sure if my student loans are federal or private. I pay through Navient. How do I know or find out if my loan is one or the other? Uh, Navient is one of the largest uh, student loan servicing companies out there. Okay. So is that uh, private? It's most likely a federally backed student loan, but okay. you have to just call and find out or look okay. at your statement. But typically, uh, Naviant is, is, is pretty good at what they do. The problem with these student loan servicing companies that I just found out, they only get like $7 a year to manage these accounts, uh, right. which is amazing. And they have to answer calls and send you mail for that amount of money. And so it <laughs> doesn't seem like a good business. And now I figured out why you can never get anybody on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's seven, but it's some very, very low number. Oh my gosh. That, that I don't know how you could do anything for $7. I don't know. Um, so here's, uh, someone made an interesting point. If your payments and interest have been put on hold for the last several months, it's a good sign that it is a federal loan because of COVID, um, the government has basically put a halt and said, hey, you don't have to pay us anything. You know, we're putting these student loan payments on hold. Um, but I do wanna make mention of this because if your income hasn't been affected and you do make your regular payments during this time, even though they're not asking you to, all that money is gonna go towards the principal and could potentially save you months and years off the backside of your loan if you can make those payments. Let's talk about that for a few seconds. Yeah. I mean, basically the government and depending on where you live, they're not making you pay your more federal mortgages. You're not required to pay your rent in certain uh, that are that's federally backed. You're not, required to pay your student loans, your credit cards, and a whole lot of other things. And the fact of the matter is some people are doing the right thing and taking that extra money and paying it towards the highest interest rates, which mm -hmm. last month, $76 billion was paid to creditors to pay down uh, their credit card debt. However, and there's always a however, <laughs> Some people say, hey, I don't have to pay for this. Look at all the money I have. Let's I go buy a Gucci perch or <laughs> stuff that I shouldn't be buying because I am in debt. And the fact of the matter is some people are doing the right thing. Some people are doing the wrong thing. And I'm glad you brought that up because with the student loans, if, if you don't have to pay it, 
It only benefits you because that debt is not going away. Those payments are just going to be put to the back of your yep. loans. And the fact of the matter, this is the scary part. Yeah, you don't have to pay your credit cards, but they're more than happy to keep charging you that 25% interest yeah. rate. Yeah, so <laughs> I guess they are. You aren't doing yourself a favor skipping payments. No, no. And obviously, if you have to because you've been laid off, that's one thing. But you know, if you can continue to make them, do it. Um, so we've got a question. Someone says, if she gets a lump sum of money, should she pay off one credit card or pay down several credit cards? So it depends, and which is the greatest answer ever. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you figure out who you owe. If you're behind on a credit card, obviously that's the person. But right. figure out who's charging you the highest interest rate and pay off that credit card right. first. And then go down the food chain, and that's how you get out of debt. When I right. said earlier in the show, um, try to triple your payment, you triple, you increase your payment to the largest interest credit credit card first. Mm -hmm. yeah. Get out of debt that way. Um, right. There's always lots of tactics for getting out of debt. There's balance transfers that you can do. Uh, you can turn around and and find a deal, but sometimes, you know, these zero interest rates for three months or no mm -hmm. payment don't turn out so well because the, what the people don't see is that maybe you're taking a 15% credit card and once the interest rates kick in after the balance transfer pro promo is done, it may be 25% interest. So know right. your terms and be careful. <laughs> Right. Yes. Well, and the other thing that I tell people is that you can't refinance your way out of debt, right? You might be able to shuffle things around, but the only way that you're going to get out of debt is to pay more than what you owe, you know, to pay more than the minimum. Right. Um, and, you know, it's a good point to bring this up that even if you do bankruptcy, even if you go through and, you know, get on one of these debt repayment plans, we still have to fix what's broken in our mindset and in our habits that got us into that situation in the first place. Because if we don't deal with the emotional spending or you know, we're not tracking anything, right? And we're just flying by the seat of our pants. If, you know, if we don't um, address those issues that are under the surface that got us into this situation to begin with, then, all the things that we're talking about today are just temporary fixes. I mean, let's face it. Right now, everybody's sitting home or should be sitting home <laughs> around the kitchen table. This is a perfect right. opportunity to start to budget. And budget is not a bad word. It's not the most fun thing, but I, know. I don't know about you, but I'm running out <laughs> of things to watch on Netflix. So at the end of the day, you can turn around and start to budget and make it a family event and go to debt.com to get our budgeting sheets and our workbooks and turn around and yes. teach your kids how to budget so they don't make the same mistakes that maybe you made. Right. I mean, it is tremendous that you have the ability to spend time with your kids. And unfortunately, it's a tough time for everybody. Right. Is that time worth it? Because they're not going to get educated as we didn't get educated in school no. about personal <laughs> finance. I mean, nope. if you want to be educated about personal finance, you're going to need to search out uh, uh, people or, or places that have good, honest, uh, information. And frankly, debt.com is a great place to start because our, ob our objective is to get everybody out of debt, whether they get out of debt on their own by teach us teaching them something or right. them learning something on our website mm -hmm. or us counseling them. Yep. At the end of the day, we don't care. We right. want to help everybody in the easiest way they can. We care about our clients success of getting debt free. Right. Well, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, when the people on your staff reached out to me and said, hey, you know, 
we would love to tell you what we're doing. We think this really fits really well with you. It was just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is great. Um, you know, and certainly everyone who's watching, you know, if you go to my website, christinelukin.com and go to the blog section, there is also a ton of great information on there for everything beyond the debt, you know, as far as, you know, the saving, the spending, and especially the emotional side of money so that you can deal with, um, with some of those things that may be causing you to get into debt in the first place. Um, but you're right. It is on the people watching, you know, you have to take that action and you have to reach out. So let's just talk a little bit of, you know, how does, how does debt.com help people who are in debt? Like if, if I call you, if I come to your website, um, what can I expect that experience to look like? I mean, it depends on what kind of debt you have. I mean, essentially our website says, do you have this debt, this debt, this debt? Do you have credit card debt? Do you have student loan? Do you have tax debt? What do you have? And right. then we try to partner or pair you with an appropriate counselor that can help you get out of debt and provides you the best or the best alternatives that are available for getting out of debt. But the fact of the matter is there's a lot of information on our website that people can learn. And a lot of the times, I, listen, I have counseled to tens of thousands of people over the years, <laughs> um, as I said, and the fact of the matter is not everybody needs a debt management program and not everybody right. needs a debt settlement program. And certainly not everybody needs to file bankruptcy. <laughs> they just need a path. And we provide yes. a path depending on the level of debt they have. Not everybody is strong enough to get out of debt their, oh, by themselves. And right. You're right, there is an emotional uh, byproduct of getting into debt. Things happen. To right. Get, you know, bad things happen to good people. And that's yeah. what we do. We help good people because if you're a bad person, chances are you're not coming to debt.com. <laughs> You're one of those guys that are or girls that are hiding your head in the sand and hoping the storm passes. But the fact of the matter is we are there to help people and we are going to give the best advice regardless if you go into a program. And a lot of the times people call and we're just like, you could do this yourself. You don't need us. And we right. have to qualify people too for our right. programs. We're not going to sign people up haphazardly because at the end of the day, it costs us a lot of money to sign people up and put them in our programs. And if you're only there for a month or two, we lost money. At the end of the day, we right. want to make sure that we're putting the right people in the right programs and they are going to be a client for a long time. And we're going to go cross that finish line together hand in hand. Yeah. And so you're basically you are screening all these providers who, who offer these various services, right? Absolutely. Yes. And I think that's really important because, you know, in the world of, you know, debt restructuring, debt refinancing, et cetera, there's a lot of shady characters out there. You know, there's a lot of fly by night stuff. I mean, I fell for it when I was in my twenties. I went to, I call them like the strip mall finance companies, mm -hmm. the ones that say like, we make loans to people, not credit scores. Well, 28% interest, right? You know, so it's like, I love the fact that all of the partners that you work with have been in business for five years or more. You know, they all have clean, a clean bill of health with um, the Better Business Bureau. And, you know, you're making sure that whether you're sending someone to a bankruptcy attorney or to a credit counseling agency, that they are an upright organization that's going to take care of these people. Listen, at the end of the day, as I said, I've been in this space for 28 years. Um, I know good from bad and I know right <laughs> from wrong. And I've seen it all. I'm and sure you have. We have a stellar reputation at debt.com. And frankly, we're not going to tarnish that. We yeah. protect our relationship. It's essentially, in order to become a provider, we do a background check on mm -hmm. you. 
we're going to go through and look at the principles of the company. We're going to look at the better business bureaus. We're going to search the court system for who you are. Have you ever been sued? What happened? Uh, mm -hmm. Now, you're always going to get complaints, to be frank with you. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you I mean, you know, Walmart gets complaints. <laughs> um, but I will tell you that we're going to do our darndest to put people in the hands of great providers and put them, and that's going to that's gonna be honest. That's yeah. the thing. Um, we don't play around. Because if they do a bad job, it affects our our business, and we 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 protect our business incredibly well. So, yeah. but people need to trust somebody, and frankly, that is the underlying theme of Debt.com. We do right. we do the business, you know. We do the checking. Think of us as the good housekeeping seal of approval. Uh, so you don't have right <laughs> yeah so hey there was another question i wanted to go back to um because i've heard several people bring this up what's the best way to work with credit card companies if you're struggling to make payments because sometimes they won't work with you until you're past due so should you stop making payments no. <laughs> so that they will negotiate with you or should they call debt.com <laughs> you should call debt.com. If you're really struggling, you should call debt.com or get on our website and we'll call you yes. back. But the fact of the matter is you should not stop making payments if you have the ability. Yeah. I mean, there is a lot of things that people can do, but you have to be honest. You know, yeah. it, it always boggles my mind that a credit card company will not talk to people unless you're past due. And I it know. makes no sense. If I know. I know I'm having challenges, <laughs> if I know I'm having problems, the other problem is the credit card companies, if you pick up the phone and say, I'm having problems, boop, they check a box and your credit card, your charging privileges is, are gone. Oh, so, yeah. All of a sudden, it, your credit it, limit drops. Yeah, it drops to zero. <laughs> but more importantly, that's a scary thing for a lot of people because a lot mm -hmm. of people, unfortunately, live off their credit cards and you know if you're protecting a your 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 finances it's tough i mean in today in 2020 people need at least one credit card whether it's travel for emergencies whatever right. and our programs allow people to keep one credit card open in order for that purpose now we suggest you may be a debit card, maybe a secured card, but whatever the case may be, but you got to have one credit card available. Now, yeah. getting asking your creditors for help, probably not the best idea because <laughs> debt.com, and, and this is an important thing, we don't deal with just one credit card. We'll deal with all your credit cards. Right. One, one place, one phone call, you're done. Yeah, and that's important. If you go to your credit card company, you, you're the average American holds four credit cards. Just I've seen as many through. as 15. Well, I've seen more than that, unfortunately. <laughs> I have seen more oh. than that. And, and, you know, it's, it's, it's incredible, you know, yeah. especially when they, you know, they have all these promos and things. But I will tell you that you make one call, we take care of your credit one way or the other yes give you the best advice that's out there yeah absolutely and you know i just dropped the um the hotline number in uh which is 844-871-3627 um, and then i dropped in a short link um in this way debt.com will know that i have referred you and then they'll take extra special care of you. So oh, yeah, will. you're one of our partners. <laughs> yeah. So that is a uh, bit.ly forward slash debt Lucan. So if you go to that, that'll take you to debt.com and they'll know that I sent you. So. And that's important because we take extra special care of referrals. Yes. Not so. to say we don't normally, <laughs> but extra special. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So someone said this, they's like, I would not do this. This is a hypothetical question only. 
Um, could someone refinance their student loan into a private loan and then file bankruptcy on that? Theoretically, yes, but is okay. that the right thing to do? No. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. That's not a good thing. Bankruptcy is not fun. I no. mean, there are ramifications of filing bankruptcy and yeah. it will, you know, it's not worth it. Yeah. It's not worth it. Yeah. Um, so someone's asking, is, is it possible for me individually to negotiate a lower interest rate on my credit cards? I'd say it's certainly it's, worth a try. It's always I mean, worth a try. I mean, frankly, hurt. yes, you can. But sometimes and most likely, when you go through a program that's offered through debt.com, those, those rates and those deals that we get are for the life until you pay off your credit cards. Um, typically, when you go and try to negotiate by yourself, mm -hmm. they'll give you a lower rate that adjusts every few months. They may not mm. do, you know, it may not be for very long. And if it is a little longer, maybe it's a year, but doubtful. Usually it's three yeah. months and then they just jack up the credit cards on you. Yeah. And again, if you tell them the wrong thing, they turn your card off. So that's not good either. No, <laughs> way, it's not. They're gonna turn your card off using our programs but you're at least getting a very large benefit because you could be paying zero interest on right. your cards. Yeah. Well, and certainly if you feel like, hey, you know, I'm in credit card debt, maybe I, maybe I don't need a program that shuts everything off. Um, but, you know, it's time to buckle down, right? And so maybe you do need to comb through your spending and say, you know, do I really need to go to Starbucks twice a day, you know, and what does that look like? And it was so funny because I don't know if you saw this, I posted on LinkedIn today um, and it said, do you know how easy it is to waste $10,000 a year? All you have to do is spend an extra $27.40 a day. That adds up to $10,000 over the course of a year. Right. So that's how easy it is to spend. But on the flip side, that's not a lot of money to be putting aside into your savings either. So I agree. But the problem is, and you mentioned something very interesting, go to Starbucks every day, get a $4, $5 coffee. Right. Which our grandparents are rolling over in their graves <laughs> saying that we're spending $5 for a cup of coffee that should be five cents or 25 cents. But the fact of the matter is you do that every day, that's $1,700 a year. So be yeah. very careful. These extra luxuries do yep. add up. So every dollar, and, and frankly, I've been looking at people's household budgets for many, many years. And, yep, me too. Uh, and the fact of the matter is there is a tremendous amount of fat in people's budget and that mm -hmm. can be reduced significantly just by looking and yeah and and basically studying your expenses. Yep. Um, yeah. A so lot of people don't want to look at it. So right. Oh, absolutely. Yep. So absolutely. that's important. Well, Howard, we are just at time and I want to respect your time because obviously you are a busy and important man and we are just so excited and thankful that uh you have come to educate us today. I feel like I've learned some things. I think everybody um, who has been here on today's presentation has learned a lot as well. So thank you so, so much. Well, I thank you. And frankly, I'm not that important to help people. <laughs> uh, but I, Good. But I am. But I, and I appreciate the opportunity. And the fact of the matter is, listen, we're all in this together. We're going to get through it. Debt.com has been doing this many, many years, and we're going to continue to do it many, many more and help tens of thousands of people. And thank yes. you for spending the time and asking us to present on your show. Yeah, awesome. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Thanks so much for being here. We will get the replay out within the next uh, 48 hours. So if there were certain parts you want to rewatch or share with um you know your husband or your wife or other family members you can do that um 
and we will see you very soon. Thanks so much, everyone.